Hi, this is Mark Birch, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Jekyll and Hyde Chapter 4, The Carew Murder Case. Stevenson sets up an ironic contrast between the beauty of the setting that he establishes and the horror of the events that are to unfold. He describes the maid as being romantically given, and as she looks down on the brilliantly lit lane, Stevenson describes her as never having felt more at peace with all men or thought more kindly of the world. The irony of this situation stems from the fact that at this moment, when the maid is experiencing this romantic vision, Hyde beats Danvers Carew to death. Carew is introduced as an aged, beautiful gentleman, and through antithetical parallelism, Hyde's introduced as a very small gentleman. Now that antithesis gives the reader an appreciation of the contrast that exists between Hyde and Carew that's evident through a consideration of the adjectives applied to Carew. While he is aged, Hyde is youthful, and while Carew is beautiful, Hyde has the haunting sense of unexpressed deformity. The presentation of Carew as innocent and having a kindness of disposition, as well as being self-content, is in stark contrast to Hyde's guilt, cruelty, and, as it's described here, ill-contained impatience. Once again, Stevenson offers a duality, foreshadowing the duality within the character of Jekyll Hyde. The evil of Hyde and his violent, inhuman nature are conveyed through Stevenson's description of his murderous behaviour towards the old, innocent and kind Carew. Hyde broke out of all bounds, and the verb broke connotes violence, with the bounds perhaps representing the restraining effects of conscience and social propriety. If someone annoys you, you don't beat them to death. Hyde exhibits a great flame of anger, a metaphor that illustrates his violent passion, the profound danger he poses, and the uncontrollable nature of his emotions. Stevenson follows this with three clauses that each begin with verbs in the present continuous tense, stamping, brandishing, carrying on, with the juxtaposition of these verbs conveying the overwhelming nature of Hyde's behaviour. He continues each of these actions at the same time, an uncontrolled and chaotic force. The verb clubbed has connotations of the primitive actions of a caveman, linking it to the description in chapter 2 of Hyde's troglodytic. Hyde exhibits ape-like fury, with the simile reinforcing the notion of Hyde as being subhuman, the zoomorphic comparison linking him to the capricious and dangerous rage of an ape. This sense of his caprice is also evident in the previous simile, like a madman. The sense of overwhelming violence is conveyed through Stevenson's use of polysyndeton in trampling his victim underfoot and hailing down a storm of blows and the body jumped upon the roadway. And this trampling underfoot also reminds the reader of Hyde's previously described violence in chapter 1, when he trampled calmly over the child's body. Hailing down a storm of blows uses violent weather to metaphorically represent the power and frequency of Hyde's blows, a power that's horrifically manifest in the bones were audibly shattered. The cane is left broken under the stress of this insensate cruelty. A insensate, meaning without feeling, complements the descriptions of Hyde as subhuman or bestial. Okay, ta.